Fletcher Previn from IBM came to JNUT and told the tale of IBM's Mac Choice program, an unbelievably rapid implementation, a view of cost that was perhaps different than what we had ever thought of on the Mac side, and he showed a provisioning process that's used at IBM that many, many of you coveted. This year he is back to share the latest and greatest in the IBM massive Mac implementation. Please welcome to the stage CIO of IBM, Fletcher Previn. The organization that, um, that I'm now responsible for in IBM, we're about 12,000 and change people. I'm approximately 60-40 split between my own retained organization and then just as IBM is in the outsourcing business for clients, I too hire IBM with uh, GBS, the services businesses, GBS being my preferred provider of application development type work, GTS being my preferred provider of infrastructure type work. Uh, and then worldwide, IBM has over 1,000 offices, um, and so it is a, a large worldwide footprint. The team, uh, we manage about 7,000 printers. Um, the help desk that we run internally to support IBM internal population gets just under 2 million tickets per year. We onboard about 35,000 new hires every year. And um, as of yesterday, just over 537,000 uh, laptops under management. Most people at IBM are on a three or four year refresh cadence for hardware. So on our population basis, that means that we're provisioning about 150,000 laptops per year. If you're curious on the split of those, um, we're about 66% Windows, 25% Mac, uh, and growing, and just under 10% Linux. But it's a heterogeneous environment, and we need to be able to provide a best-in-class experience for all those platforms. So our, why do we exist? What is our purpose inside the company? Um, we're here to create a productive environment for IBMers. Um, within that is improving our ability to attract and retain top talent. And when did it become okay to have this Jetsons-like experience at home and Flintstones-like experience at work? <laughs> I think you know, this, this audience probably more than anybody gets, the answer is it's not. And so we spend a great deal of time making sure that our philosophy is that the state of IT and the quality of the service we're provisioning is a daily reflection of what the company thinks and feels about its people. And that if we really believe that, then the environment that we're creating from an IT perspective is not trivial. It's actually core to a strategy of creating a high-performing, highly engaged workforce. And so that really led us to pursue the Mac at IBM program um, several years ago and develop a, a different approach to how we think about provisioning services and devices that basically says, give people the right equipment, manage it in a modern way, and enable self-service and self-sufficiency in the environment. The business case for the Mac at IBM program was very much predicated on a belief that there would just be fewer problems in the environment if we could solve this provisioning into an automated way delivered over the cloud where there is no step three, that we would see fewer problems coming into the environment, and that we would have a significantly reduced support burden. And I'm very pleased to say that um, fast forward three years, that's very much still the case. So here is a snapshot of the number of Macs deployed at the midpoint of each month. So in September, we were at 134,000. And if I map that to the number of support tickets opened as a percentage of that population, what this chart is really saying is, even though we're deploying more Macs every month, we're not requiring a commensurate increase in the number of support staff. And if you just want to simplify this even further, year-over-year year compares, we continue to see efficiencies in end-to-end -end solving of problems, and more recently, in particular, with the addition of some of the AI and Watson technologies on our help desk uh, to allow people to describe problems they're having in natural language and then actually take action and, and address some of those things around password reset and otherwise. Looked at another way, um, we have now deployed 277,000 Mac and iOS devices inside of IBM. Those are supported by a total team of 78 people to include the engineering and support staff. 
We continue to see very high first call resolution for both the Mac and the Windows 10 help desks. Um, we track all the things you would expect a help desk to track, but first call resolution tends to be a really good predictor of overall happiness with the service. Um, if we can't solve a problem on the phone and we have to send someone to your desk, that is a more expensive operation for us from an IT perspective. Um, that happens about 6% of the time for the Mac population, about 14% of the time for the Windows 10 population. But in both environments, we've done a lot of work to really raise the bar on, on net promoter scores and, and people's satisfaction with the quality. And you can see here, this is the net promoter scores for the Mac program as well as the, uh, the Windows 10 program. And one of the things that we've heard over the years is, well, you're IBM and you have resources that not everybody has. You have access uh, to companies that not everybody has. And um, you know, we wish we could um, get the benefit of some of the work that you're doing. And I think there's some merit to that. And um, we wanted to see what we could do in that space. And so I'm very pleased to be able to share with you that Effective Immediately, uh, we are open sourcing the Mac at IBM program. <laughs> It's available now at the GitHub repo address you see there. Um, and, um, and we look forward to being able to mutually benefit from that. IBM's got a longstanding commitment to open source. Um, and so that is the announcements that I was looking forward to sharing with all of you today. So thank you very much. Yeah.